I'm Cooper Ignatian with Canyons News, and this is your News Micro. Firefighters work to stop the Jake fire from spreading any further. Cooper Ignatian with Canyons News. Contractors and construction workers are some of the most important jobs in our country. They create all the places we love and even build our homes. But how are they doing during these times? I spoke with the VP of Field Operations for Restar Group to see. As of today, we are fortunate enough to be considered essential as far as COVID pandemic is concerned. And we've had to take uh, many precautions to safeguard our employees and our job sites. I also checked in to see what kind of precautions that the contractors take on a daily basis to keep safe and secure from COVID-19. And by mandatory masks and uh, face coverings. Also, we added um, wash stations, additional wash stations, so that the guys can wash their hands and uh, sanitize. Uh, we've had to limit the number of employees per job site and try to maintain social dis distancing as best possible. Local contractors are still heavy at work and won't be slowing down anytime soon. I'm Cooper Ignatium with Canyons News. The city's water agency is very important for the community, especially in Southern California, and it takes a lot of leadership to run it. Diego Serrano has the details. Election day is getting closer and closer. And to most of Santa Clarita, there's no denying that so much is on the ballot. Water management is one of the many issues that will be addressed to voters. Santa Clarita resident Beth Bronstein is one of the candidates running for the SCV Water Board. Like most people, I didn't really know much about the Water Board before I decided to run for it. And that made me to wonder why. <laughs> why don't we know about the Water Board? We all know that we have a water agency but we don't know about the water board. Bronstein also explains that climate change is an important factor for those voters who are still deciding which candidate to vote for. It's, it's kind of like a no-brainer that our climate is changing and that we can't rely on snow caps being formed and we can't rely on rain. Like we have to start thinking a little bit more creatively. I mean, regardless of which candidate a voter supports, voters should get their issues across and make their voice heard. I mean, I'm a big fan of voting regardless. Honestly, even if people don't vote for me, I, I, I want people to vote. Just in general, this is what democracy looks like. All our voices should be heard. And I really hope we get a lot of young people out this time because it's your future. <laughs> it's in your hands. I'm Diego Serrano for Canyons News. A local nonprofit organization has been helping people with disabilities getting jobs and getting more active in their community. Sherlock Penny with more. Since 1997, Avenue Supporting Living Services, a nonprofit organization in Santa Clarita, has been assisting adults with disabilities to get active in life and in their communities with the help of Development Director Natalie Carreta. Uh, Avenue's Supported Living Services is a 501c3 nonprofit. They support adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, to become and remain active participants in the community by living in their own homes, working, volunteering, and socializing. Uh, many of the people we support still work and um, they're, they're engaging in productive and meaningful activities. Our and with the pandemic around impacting the organization's fundraisers, there was still a light at the end of the tunnel. Because of COVID, we typically would have a restaurant fundraiser every other month uh, to help raise funds for the agency. And um, since many of the restaurants are suffering right now, we decided to try out the clothing drive. And with the clothing drive, brought back the spirit of fundraising for the organization. Um, they, they are in turn going to donate these clothes to people in need here in the country and, and third world countries. So they're going to good use once they leave here. For Kenyans News, I'm Shrat Penny. Gyms are obviously hard to get into right now due to COVID-19, but that hasn't been stopping some people. Malcolm Dos Santos Silva with the facts. After a long break, gyms, yoga studios, and other fitness organizations are possibly up for reopening Los Angeles County. 
As LA County is expecting to receive the approval to move the reopening procedure, garage gyms and fitness studios have been filling up this gap. It's a fair assumption to make that the COVID-19 has been stressful, as many people's daily routines remain restricted. With the challenges of working from home and limited access to fitness facilities, garage gyms and small workout studios are excellent options for those who still want to exercise during this time of crisis. When asked about on how garage gyms and studios have been useful, Virginia Yedro, a workout enthusiast, said. What I really like about Fitness Within is it's a family-oriented gym and I feel very safe during this pandemic. I recently had the chance to meet with Joanna Ortiz, owner of the fitness studio Fitness Within. I had the opportunity to know some of the challenges in reconciling her work of directly contact with people and the problem in which we were dealing with. Right now, we're not um, full on capacity at the, at the time because of COVID, but uh, that would be the most difficult part, not seeing everyone that I'm used to seeing on a daily basis and not being able to help uh, my regular clients and new clients. And for Kenyans News, I am Malcolm Dos Santos. And that's it for this week's News Micro. Please follow Kenyans News on all social media platforms and have a great, safe week. Cooper Ignatian with Canyons News, checking out.